To say Atacokan's Mike Ranta likes to paddle in canoe would be a huge understatement. Mike is the first person to paddle solo across our continent in one season. I started on uh, April 1st in Vancouver at, uh, at the end of the Fraser River. Uh, it was pouring into the, the Pacific and uh, I ended up stopping in Tatamagush, Nova Scotia. I was shooting for Cape Breton. I uh, never quite made it. We had just such a heck of a year for weather. I had over 80% rain. It was just incredible. And you know, we uh, uh, making it as far as I did in the conditions that I had to do it in was, uh, I was pretty proud of myself, that's for sure. And we, uh, we pulled it off. October 9th, I was the first guy to cross the continent solo uh, in one season. And uh, we went for another 21 more days, or 22 more days after that. And uh, logged in almost 7,500 kilometers. And uh, it was amazing. Mike was not totally alone on his journey. He had the company of his dog and best friend Spitzy, a seven-year-old purebred Finnish Spitz. Starting to get a little bit Mike believed in himself and had his community behind him. And that, and his dog Spitzy, was all the inspiration he needed. The people I met along the way were fantastic. They were so inspiring to me, you know. Uh, but you know, there, there, was, uh, there was the animals. We've had more than a dozen bears come into our camp. Um, that's where I had this little fella come in and, uh, you know, he took care of him in, in a heartbeat. And there was one instance where, uh, where we had coyotes come in and I had to step up and help him on it because they were they had no fear of him. So we were, uh, we were a pretty good team when it come to that. Uh, if there's one trip that I could do over again, it would be the North Shore Lake Superior. It was beautiful. A very positive, beautiful lake to be on. and. Uh, it was just, it was just incredible, you know. And uh, I'll never forget the moment when I pulled into Tatamagush and my, uh, my dad was waiting there for me. There was, uh, there was a, lo a lot of pride coming in there. That's for sure. It was, it was a great moment. He is also very proud of the fact that this cross-continent journey raised over ten thousand dollars for the local Atacokan Youth Center, a place he believes is an integral part of any community. Eva Shields is the president of the Youth Initiative, and she appreciates the fundraising, but also loves how Mike has inspired the younger generation in Atacokan. He approached me and said, do you want to partner and we'll figure out how to raise some funds doing this? Um, we've done it as a fundraiser, but also as an example for the youth of Atacokan, that you might be from a small town, but you can still set big goals. You can still accomplish big goals and you can bring your community along. So it's been a very positive experience. Mike ended his journey on October 31st in Tatamagush, Nova Scotia, and he can't wait to do it again. There's one thing I've always said, it's is thank you to all of Canada, to everybody that I met along the way. It did, they did, they changed me better as a person. I never ran into any negativity when I went on my trip, when I with anybody. So to, to see that on that level and to have so many people who didn't know me, didn't a lot of times didn't even know what I was doing, and, uh, and just to go out of their way to help me. You know, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was very inspiring for me, you know, and that's why I mean, I, I can't wait to do this again. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun. 2016, Cape Breton, here I come, you know, and uh, I am gonna make it this time. Mike's canoe is signed by the community of Atacokan, as well as people from across the country. It can be seen in the Atacokan Museum. For Go Thunder Bay, I'm Janice Gummison.